Hello, and welcome to a Geek's 5-Minute News. I am your host, Mr. Octopi, and today we are going to be covering things like Intel's Thunderbolt, and the new Unreal Engine 4, uh, NVIDIA's new Kepler series graphics card, a few more information bits on that, and the new Google tablet, and even more. So stay tuned, and hopefully you enjoy the show. So first up on our list, we have Intel's new Thunderbolt cables. So Intel has already come out with Thunderbolt, uh, but they use actual copper wiring. And originally, Thunderbolt was planned to use actual optical connections. So currently, Thunderbolt is capable of transferring up to 10 gigabytes a second both ways, so both back and forth. And in 2013, Intel is saying that they are thinking that they're going to be adopting the new optical transfer method. And we should be able to see it, well, not only higher prices, but once those goes down, definitely a lot higher bandwidth and a lot more things to come. Along with the fact that current generation Thunderbolt cables can only go up to a few meters, but this optical cable is going to be going up to maybe even tens of meters. So for all of you Linux fans out there, we have a new piece of news here on Fudzilla, and it's considering Linux 3.3. Now, I wish I've gotten into Linux a little bit more, however, I'm more of a Windows Mac guy, so I don't know as much about this. I'm not going to go into detail because I definitely don't know. I wish I did. But basically, it's just adding things, a few small things like some support for Sandy Bridge e GPUs, or sorry, not Sandy Bridge e, Sandy Bridge GPU support. And some other stuff. So if you do want to check this out, make sure that you visit the article. And for people who actually know what they're talking about, you can check it out. All right, our next piece of news is considering the new 28 nanometer NVIDIA graphics card codenamed Kepler. And it turns out that while there have been some speculations about, you know, some of their graphics card not being able to produce as many as they would like, you know, they wouldn't have as many wafers from their supplier. However, according to this article, they have been able to supply a decent amount of actual GPUs. So while there may not be an unlimited supply, apparently production is fine. And if you do want your GTX 680, then you should be able to order one off of Newegg or whatever site you're going to be getting off of. I don't know, I'd like EVGA, but... Whatever works with you. So in the epic gaming world, Unreal Engine 4 is something really big that should be coming out within, or at least released, or previewed, or whatever the heck's going to happen within the next year or so, presumably at E3. But, turns out that maybe they're, the game developers are actually going to be sticking with Unreal Engine 3 for just a little bit longer for the next-gen console. So everybody knows that, you know, the Xbox 720 or the PS4 are going to be coming out, or at least previewed again at E3. However, for the time being, Unreal Engine 3 seems to be sticking with most developers just because a lot of people already know about it, and switching to a new engine really does take a lot of time. And the Samaritan demo, which is amazing, runs off of Unreal Engine 3. So you can already do a lot with that. But in the future, be looking forward to Unreal Engine 4. I can't wait for it, and I'll definitely be providing you with more news on this front. So for all of you Intel fans out there, here's some news regarding the new Ivy Bridge E. However, it's not going to be coming out for a decent time to go. So Ivy Bridge E, which is supposed to be the successor to the Sandy Bridge E, which as all of you know are complete power monsters. And up there in the expense front, however, are complete beasts in performing. But Ivy Bridge E, it was kind of not really known if it was going to be coming out or not. You know, there's some Mac Pros that were rumored to be possibly coming out with that soon. It's going to be using the same 2011 socket. However, it's still going to be coming out and it's delayed to halfway or second quarter or second half. I don't know when, of 2013 because Haswell got bumped back a little bit. This will be using the same old uh, 22 nanometer, you know, Trigate 
uh, transistor technology and it should lead up to more performance and in terms of Sandy Bridge E there's been some spe some speculation about the core i7 3980x which would be the successor to the 3960x nobody knows yet if it's going to be a eight core version of Sandy Bridge E or just a higher clocked six core version but that should be coming out shortly and by shortly I mean within the next few quarters uh, no actual release day on that however be looking forward to that along with ivy bridge e so all of you with you know your asus or evga 2011 socket motherboards there's another chip coming for you Again, on the topic of Nvidia's new Kepler series 28 nanometer graphics card i'm sorry for all of you amd fans out there but the 7000 series has already come out it's pretty awesome but the news right now is for the gtx 680 so so far no actual release date, still rumored to be March 23rd within the next week or so. However, an actual American company, I said last time that Zotac has put up pre-order over in the other hemisphere rather than Europe and such. But now Asus has put out a pre-order for the GTX 680. It is going for around $570, which may seem high compared to the, its competitors. But this is just a pre-release, and it might be going down. There have been it could go down a hundred dollars. It could go down a lot more or a lot less. So just saying, GTX 680 is coming. Be looking forward to it, and around the price range of I'd guess 500, give or take 50 dollars. So for our last little tidbit of information on the Geeks Five Minute News, we have here the new Google Tablet in production. So this is manufactured by Asus and is powered by a Tegra 3 processor. I hope I pronounced that right. It should be coming out around quarter two, 2012. So for you people who don't like buying Apple products or Amazon products for the Kindle Fire or the iPad, then this might just be here for you. And it should be roaming around the $150 to $200 zone. So who knows how all these tablets are going to compete with the new Ultrabooks coming out with Intel's Ivy Bridge, but it should be interesting to find out. Okay, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's five minute news for a geek and leave a like comment rating whatever you'd like just to help me out a little bit tomorrow again i'll be doing this and coming out with whatever information is going to be coming out if you guys want me to track anything or tell me what you want me to research or whatever considering whatever technology or any news that you'd like me to look up leave a comment as i said before and i'll definitely consider looking into it so i should be doing some new news broadcasts on whatever you guys would like hope you enjoyed the show and this rocks up by See you tomorrow.